Welcome back to Rebuild Rescue. All right, guys, we're back here in the hangar today. I actually got here a little bit late because I had a doctor's appointment this morning. My leg is doing really well. They actually said I'm probably one of the quickest healing patients they had that I must be taking really good care of it. Which obviously you guys know, I've been running around like a crazy man getting stuff done. But Joe is here, Keith is here, they're both APIAs. If you haven't checked out the TB20 videos, Joe was in a lot of helping us out. Good job, Joe. There it is, it's up in the air. <laughs> so they've been here getting some stuff done. Got a couple things to show you on the 401. Found some stuff we're a little worried about. So let's get at it. So the other day, Joe and I were working on clearing out all the components on this left side engine bay, and we found some really bad stuff. Take a look. As we're pulling apart the left engine, these are some of the clamps that were on the engine. And here is the exhaust. They talk about an AD for this exhaust. Well, that's why. So this will actually cook the airframe when it starts leaking. And this probably started leaking a long time ago. So all of this stuff is gonna need replaced. And I think last I saw it's around around 10 grand. Have you replaced any of those before, Joe? No. No. Luckily, I don't work on these anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I avoid the twins anymore. They're too much work. They are a huge amount of work. So that exhaust is junk. We need a new exhaust. And guys, this is why there are so many directives and so many inspections that need done, especially on these old airplanes. I mean, you don't know until you know. And hopefully you're not finding out when you're falling through the sky. I'm also looking down here where we got some, uh, some bird stuff in here. And it looks like some corrosion. So we're gonna have to get that cleaned up and see what it looks like. This looks good. It's just stained up. But that looks okay. questionable. This piece here, this plate's gonna need replaced for sure. Well, this is a, an exterior part of the panel, so this isn't as big of a deal to replace this piece and this piece, but if we gotta replace that piece, that piece goes all the way through the bulkhead and attaches to the main spar. Uh, this, has me, this has me really worried. This has me like really, really worried. One way or the other, we'll get it figured out. We'll get it figured out, but I wanted to show you guys um, you know, it, everything has looked really good. This, this other engine compartment, it's, it's just looking scary. So we're, we're going to keep digging into it. We'll see what this looks like. And yeah, we will. So if you guys look down in here real close, this is the damage that we're talking about. This is one of the main engine cradle areas. And unlike the right side where it's in really good shape, this left side, that's in really bad shape. It's looking like we're gonna have to replace possibly this whole cradle assembly. I did reach out to Cessna, to Textron, and the parts would be about nine months on back order. They could get them done in about nine months. The spar straps that we have to install on the wings are on nine month back order as well. We already have them ordered, but these would be another nine months. It would be nine months until we could even take apart this wing and get the parts in to fix it. So it's sitting here in the hangar do doing pretty much nothing as far as the wings go for like nine months. And, you know, talking to Joe and, and to a few other APIAs that have a, a lot of experience in this, they're saying this is about a 150 hour job. Because you get to pull literally, everything needs pulled apart into little pieces. It's almost like a, a Lego set or an erector set that's connected by rivets. So it's a ton of work. And we don't know what the rest of the wing looks like yet. It looks good so far, but we haven't done a deep inspection. 
You know, we do know that we have bladders that we have to replace. We do know all the components need replaced. So what I'm looking at is what's the smartest way to do it? You know, what's the smartest way to repair this? Should we repair this or should we find new wings? What do you guys think? Maybe if we find a pair of wings, you know, maybe it's going to be cheaper from a, from a donor plane or something. Whatever you guys think, let me know. This is your project too. Give me an idea of what you guys want to do. What's the decision? Post down in the comments. Let me know. Meanwhile, we're going to keep pulling off the components because we have to pull that tail apart. We have to pull that whole thing off. Like literally that inner main rudder structure needs to come off because we have to check it for corrosion. Everything's got to come apart. Let's go. Hey guys. I wanted to take a minute and introduce today's video sponsor, Hone. Now, if you guys remember in previous videos, I've been watching my diet and I've been changing some things around so I can start to get a little bit more healthy. Well, I noticed I just don't have the energy that I used to have no matter what I do. So I reached out to Hone. Hone addresses one of the things that all of us men are going to be experiencing at one time or another, low testosterone. Hone offers at-home biomarker testing, in-depth video physician consults, and FDA-approved medication delivered straight to your door. Normally, you would have to go to a doctor's office. You'd have to get blood drawn. It would be a lengthy process. With Hone, it's a simple pinprick of your finger. You put it on this sample card, and that's what gets mailed in. That's it. It's really easy. It's really quick and it's really convenient without even having to leave your home or office. So with all the work that we have to get done here on a daily basis at Rebuild Rescue, I needed to get my energy back and Hone has done just that. As it turns out, my testosterone wasn't at levels where it should be. Hone has helped me to hone in on that. Sorry, I had to do that. And now with a little bit of help from Hone, I'm back on track. I have a lot more energy I am no medical expert. In fact, I'm far from it. However, Hone Health is, and they're just the right place to go to get you back on track so you're feeling 100% again. So for only $45, you guys can get back on track with your health and start feeling better. So click the link below in the description or go to honehealth.com slash rebuildrescue. Get back on track with your health, with your energy. Get your libido up. Let's get at it. How does it smell? Oh, bad. <laughs> it smells bad. in there, old ones. It was home to many, many, many animals. <laughs> we don't really know how many animals. Lots of birds though, I guess. You guys got it? Wow. Nice. I can't, this thing weighs like nothing. Yeah. Oh, 
All right. One down, one to go. So as we were pulling this off, if you look right here, you can see there's a crack going completely through this piece. Now, I, I can't see the back side, but there's a crack here, and there's also a crack right on the other side. So that does hold, with some other components, it holds those, those rudders in place. But, you know, that's a, it's a really small crack. It's hard to see, but that's really alarming. And, and again, this tail was on here when that helicopter came flying by. There's a FAA report about it. And we saw how the bottom rudder was ripped off. So the mounts up through here are in good shape. Um, those pieces are going to need replaced, but again, that's, that's one of the things, like, we have to take all this stuff off, like all this here, if you notice, there's some paint and stuff like that that's coming off. Not, not any corrosion back here, but we got to get it all apart. We're going to have to inspect all of it. All the bushings in here, they're going to need replaced. Um, we'll be able to move this assembly about and, you know, kind of shake all the stuff out of it. And then once we have the ice blaster here, the dry ice blaster, we're going to blast the inside of all of these components and then we're going to take a camera inside there. We'll look around, we'll see if there's any, if we can see any corrosion. If there is, we'll treat it. If it's not treatable, it'll get replaced. Is it the, uh, the part in there is ripped? The mount? Oh, it's the bonding strap. Oh, gotcha. You all right? Yeah. Make sure that gets in the edit. <laughs> Cause you know if that was me, that would get in the edit. You all right? Yeah. Yeah, just make sure. Because I hit it right on the corner here. I just want to make sure I wasn't breaking. Let me see. I don't think I am. I think Tiny I'm little bit. Like I that. saw it. I saw a little yeah. thing. I was like, ooh. Yeah. You all right? Yeah, yeah. Need some ice? Lollipop? Yeah, lollipop. Right. Yeah, <laughs> Harrison here, as he was filming. I was going like this. <laughs> and then I hit my head and went like this into the camera. Into the camera. And I was watching and... He's got a wound. He's wounded. So yeah, we got little, cameraman little down. Wound. You can tell you're really getting into what you're doing. Yeah. Just you know. When you get injured. Anything for the shot. Filming anything, <laughs> anything for the shot. Ugh. But we got him a lollipop and some ice, so he's yeah, good to go. I'm all good. And a band aid. And a band All right, is this ready to come off? No. The middle one's stuck in there at the moment. So I sprayed it. Which one? The middle bearing there is stuck. Oh, jeez. Moving out yet? Get a flathead. So there's a number of these bolts and nuts that we take out that are just really rusty. So we'll replace a ton of these, but we're also going to be spending a lot of time just cleaning up hardware. behind you there. Ooh, and this is the reason 
we want to pull this stuff out you know it's it's looks like it's 90 yeah it's all surface but we have to check all this stuff before this thing's flying again here we let's uh let's do the old pour the dirt out ready oh we got a rock. hey as much. Now let's try it this way. <laughs> All right, not as bad. <laughs> Go ahead and put it down here with this one. How hard is this whole assembly to get off of here? It doesn't look too bad. It looks like there's bolts here. These, these four bolts here. And probably eight or ten more on the other side. And then I guess there'd probably be some inside the tail. Yeah. Up front, probably where those two little holes are actually. And I guess, do we have to, do we have to get this off? I guess that's a question. Like, do we have to get this off? I guess it's good to get it off to check behind there. And to get it cleaned out. Yeah, to get it cleaned out more than anything. Yeah, so, so we got to take this off. And it's maybe an hour's worth of work. Hopefully. Well, it depends. Are you helping or not? Well, <laughs> this is true. This, this is, true. is true. This is true. All right. So um, if you're not in the way, it'll take an hour. Oh, but if I'm in the way, it's going to take two hours. <laughs> <laughs> you're all heart buddy. I know. I know. Well, I mean, I'm not going to fit in the tail. Well, this one, I might fit in the tail of this one, actually, but... Yeah, this one's bigger. Yeah. yeah it's a lot better than the TB20. It's 100 degrees today, though. Is it? Yeah. I could put a fan. I could stick a fan somewhere in there blowing in this yeah, way. Yeah, that's great. Bring the bird smell <laughs> to the tail. <laughs> <laughs> so over the last couple months, all the viewers have been in the comments and I've seen so many supportive comments. I've seen so many people that are just glad to be part of the rescue crew. Myself and all the staff here at Rebuild Rescue, we spend a lot of our time in the comments. We spend a lot of our time reading them and sharing them because we appreciate your investment in the channel. Like, I can't be more thankful. It's been amazing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm humbled by it all. It makes me feel so blessed. And I know we've had some commercials where at the end of the commercial, we thank our advertisers for advertising with us because the advertisers support us here financially and they support the ability for us to do things like the Rescue Foundation. And I know you guys haven't heard a lot about this and it originally started out as Rebuild Rescue Charities. Um, you know, I just wanted to share with you guys that A, we're working really hard on the foundation and we do have, we do have articles of incorporation that we've been granted a 501c3 status right here from the state and right here from the IRS. Join us, do some good things, keep watching. If we just touch one life, change one heart, affect one person, we're doing a good job. So I challenge everybody to do something positive. I challenge you, keep watching, because we're doing some great things and we aren't gonna quit. And as crazy as this whole project is it's absolutely insane to do this project 100 percent but we're doing it not because of me not because of any one person but because of all of us so i appreciate everything you guys do even the negative comments i appreciate you guys again i'm saving a spot for you guys in the 401 on the potty seriously appreciate your time now let's get back to fix in the 401. Hey Joe, what'd you find? Look through that hole and look at your trim cables coming up there. See the twisted rope there on the left? <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's not supposed to be like that. Wow. You see those two cables there? They are totally twisted. That's for the trim. So they're totally twisted together. That is not the way that you want your trim cables. <clears throat> the other thing is that just does, they don't just twist themselves. So 
Those have been twisted like that for probably about the whole time Sam has owned the airplane. You know, it's one of those things that, you know, relatively people are never going to check, but you know, that can be dangerous. Especially too, with the, that means the whole time that they're moving, they're rubbing together, you know, and creating friction, which just isn't good. Not that you move them that much, but you're still moving them. So it's a good find. We'll get that fixed. There's a bracket right in here. Okay. We got to come up off of it. First. Okay, so this lifts up and back and off. And then, yeah, and then we got to feed that down. Wow, this chain is a little stiff. So that's another thing, like, I've seen people take airplanes that are sitting places for years and years and then fly them away after working on them. It's one thing to do it to a 1989 airplane that's been sitting for 15 years. It's a whole nother thing to do it to a 1969 airplane that's been sitting for 15 years and has just existed 20 years longer. So this is just gonna basically lift up and that'll fall down through. All right, do we have enough clearance here? This is crazy. All right, we're clear that. Yeah, we got it. Oh my gosh, let's, uh, I don't know where to go. <laughs> this thing's huge. This is like, this is like this, we could put this on the little experimental airplane over there. Wow. Yeah, we could just, we could bolt it. We could take these and stick them right on this little airplane and it would be, it, it would be like perfect wings for it. Look at it. This is why we took that off. And this is why we're taking this off. You know, so I know a lot of you guys that have been following along with this project, you know, have a lot of questions and, you know, even have post in the comments about, hey man, like, why isn't this thing flying yet? This thing should be flying. Guys, look, we set out to have this done this time in 2023, because we want to have the 401 at Oshkosh and we want it to be completely done. But the number one thing is it all has to be 100% right. Like we're not going to half-ass it. We're not going to endanger anybody. It's going to be right 100% through and through. To do that, Everything's got to come apart. That whole interior has to come out. We have to clean it up. Like, look at the dirt that just gets stuck in between those surfaces. Not sure how this thing goes back together, but I'm excited. <laughs> it looks really good in here. Yeah, actually, the tail looks on the back. The tail looks really good. All right. If you look in here, this is all the stuff that I was worried about. Yeah, I see a lot down in here. You know, getting cleaned out, and I wanna, I wanna replace all of this, um, you know, all this rubber here because it's like it's so brittle. And then when we get it apart, if you look here, there's also just a ton of dirt in there, and I think I think we just need to take the assembly off and make sure it's cleaned up right. Yeah. And then this actually looks pretty good in here, but it's gonna need blasted out. A lot of screws. Yeah. A lot more too. <laughs>
Do you have your pilot's license? No. no? Just always been around. I got planes. a lot of stick time, but no yeah. license. It's kind of like when I, I grew up with it, so I was yeah. those other things I wanted to do and hang out with that. Yeah. So that's riveted in. All right, I'm gonna have to push these back through the summer. Okay, so what we got under here is we've got the elevator controls, getting a little shadowing, that's a little better. And we're gonna have to disconnect these because they go through the holes in the vertical stave. And the vertical stave comes all the way down to the bottom of the airplane and attaches to two bolts down here on the belly. So all that components there are gonna have to come out in order to get that vertical off of there. Magic. Oh, they actually work. Surprisingly enough, they turn. Are we Who's at the pulley for? That's for your elevator or your rudder trim. Yes. Rudder trim. That actually, so we relieve the tension, that way we can take the chain off. Since everything's coming off and we'll be retensioning when we go back together. Yes, yeah, so it'll be starting over when it goes back together. There it is. There it is. Okay. It's about to. All right, now you should be free, right? So this is actually holding on some of the trim cables and stuff? Actually, that's your main cable. This is the main cable. Yeah, <laughs> elevator. That's wow. it. Wow. Yeah. So that's the thing. If this pops out... Well, that's why you put a cotter pin in it. So if this pops out, you can't fly. Well, well you, you fly, but you're not going to be able to go up or down. Right. Well, Well, it'll choice. go... Right, yeah. <laughs> it's going to go up or down one way or the other, depending <laughs> on which way it feels right. like at, at that point. Wow. So we'll, we'll replace all these. So Keith and Joe have been working on this tail all day. It's really hard to show what it takes to, to get this stuff apart. Um, I've been running back and forth, doing different things, and really there's not enough room for us to all kind of get in there and work on it. And it is hot. Joe was literally up in the tail, and it's something that was really hard for us to show, uh, you know, trying to pull apart all the bolts because we definitely got to get this tail off it, you know, it, it has some corrosion on it. We need to clean up. It'll be much better to clean up when it's off. And we want to get underneath it, make sure that is uh, all perfect. So, yeah, so we just got to keep wrenching away on it. Um, I think tomorrow is uh, another day. And by the time you guys watch this, I'll have already been through Oshkosh, but Oshkosh is in a few days. So we got a lot of stuff going on, but it, it's coming along. It's a lot. This is a big project. Yeah. This is a huge project. Uh, I know a lot of the viewers don't realize how big of a project this is. And even just pulling this stuff apart, this stuff, right. how huge this is. Or maybe you guys do when you look at it, you're like, oh my gosh, the whole back of the airplane's missing. Yeah. So, but it'll be good. It'll be good because we'll get it all painted up. It'll uh, you know, all be sealed up. We'll be able to go over everything inch by inch. Here's another trim wheel and, and it's, it's locked up solid. So. If you have an old airplane that's been sitting around for a long time, hasn't been used, make sure you check this stuff out. It could be the difference of uh, life or death right here.
to wonder in what's under this access panel right here. special help. So I don't know about you guys, but when I get a stuck screw that won't come out, I'll usually take my screw adjuster removal tool to get the screw out. I know a lot of folks probably would have said to drill it out or something like that, but honestly, a grinder, it gets it hot. So it gets the screw hot, that helps release it, and you can get a good, a really good sized flathead on it. And like nine times out of 10, or maybe even more, they come right out. So it wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't about 120 degrees in there. And if I would fit, it'd probably be a little bit easier too. And if I could bend my knee or put pressure on my knee, because you kind of got to be on your knees in between the rails. And I was, I was kind of in there where I had to be. I was able to put some penetrating fluid on all the bolts. But man, I'll tell you what. Joe wasn't kidding, getting back in there is tough. And then once you're back in there, like you're in there, there's not much room to move around. Man, this is atrocious. This is so bad. I think I do more vacuuming on the 401 than anything else. So I wanted to get this cleaned out so we could get in there 
and take a really good look at the corrosion in here because we have to make a decision of what we're doing. So let's keep getting this cleaned up. We're gonna scrub that area. Man, that's dirty. All right. I gotta get some safety glasses so I don't get any corroded bird crap in my eyes. Got a little degreaser on here and see if we can't get this cleaned up a little better so we can see what we're working with. Right out of there. handy dandy flashlight out. I am very sweaty and very dirty. So if you guys look this plate right here which is a it's a doubler plate so it's fairly easy to remove. This plate is is corroded. There's definitely corrosion there. So if there's corrosion here chances are there's corrosion behind it. The top of it has some corrosion as well. I can't really tell. I think the back side of this also has some corrosion on it. It's hard to see. Oh, wow. So. I just saw some really bad corrosion. Let me, let me get a camera so I can get it in there so you guys can see it. This is not at all what you want to see. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. I'm gonna try to light and lighten it up here. But that whole backside of the engine mount is completely and devastatingly corroded. Look at this one right here. Wow. So that there is like really, really corroded all the way through. And there's just major, major, major corrosion all through this side. Let me, let me go over and let me show you the other side and what it's supposed to look like. This is the first thing that I've seen and I know I was kind of asking a question of whether or not 
we should get a wing for this or repair this one. But I'm 95% sure it's not worth repairing. This wing's not worth repairing. I think this is going to be one where we're going to have to replace this wing. And you can see there's a little surface corrosion here, nothing alarming, and there's some dirt. But that's the way that it should work. That's, yeah, that's the way it should look. And here is the mount that we were looking at as well on the other side where this has some dirt on it. There's like no corrosion on it. So this is the outside of the right wing. You can see it's got some dirt. It's got some surface corrosion. You can see some of that brown stuff there. That's just dirt and kind of like gunk, but nothing alarming like the other side. So at this point, oh, there's my screwdriver. I've been looking for that. This right side looks 99%, 95% good. There looks to be some surface uh, corrosion stuff that could be cleaned up. There's no pitting. There's nothing major over here. Now we're gonna get our dry ice blaster, which will clean that up 100%, and we'll be able to really see any imperfections. Um, and we're gonna also pull apart some of the other access points around this area and double check underneath and all the way back through all the ribs and all the supports. I think this right side is good uh, from what I can see. I'm gonna get a company in here really soon that specializes in corrosion and in finding, you know, any corrosion problems or anything like that on aircraft. And we're going to do um, an NDT test on the spars that go through the aircraft. Um, now that it's apart, we can get all the testing done. In aircraft, in aviation, you can even look at something and it looks fine. No corrosion, no anything but there can be like cracks in places in this NDT test. It's called an eddy current test. You can test it and you can see if there's problems with it that you don't see yet. And we want to do that before we invest any more time or any more money into these, you know, into these parts. And it's something that we had to get all these engines out. We had to get the exhaust out. I would have seen if we would have originally pulled those exhausts out on that left side, I would have seen that earlier and then knew that that was an issue. So, but we got this far. This side looks good. I think we're gonna be okay in the right. That left side, I think we may need a wing. Uh, I do know where there's a wing or two. I know we're gonna to have to get a left wing. I know it's not a question. I think the question is, do we try to find maybe a donor airplane with like, you know, a wing or maybe even two wings and maybe even mid-time engines. I've been thinking about that, you know, but again, it's not my decision. It's everyone's decision, you know, so I don't know. What do you guys think? Should we see if we can find two wings and mid-time engines so we can get this thing flying sooner? Or should we just keep on the course, find a wing for the left side, work on the right one, continue to get everything overhauled and go that route? Let me know what you guys think. I do got to get ready for Oshkosh because I'm so excited to see you guys out there. And by the time you guys see this, I will already have seen you. I wish we could have got more done today. I mean, I really wish we could have got that tail off. But man, this, this takes so much time. Like, like it's, it's crazy. The amount of time we have in this airplane at this point, I mean, it's got to be in the probably 500 hour range. And I am positive. It's got to be more than that even. And I'm positive we're going to have two, 3,000 hours in this, if not more by the time we're done. All right, guys, so Jason's still at Oshkosh. I decided to get Joe and Keith to come back out because while he's at Oshkosh, we're gonna surprise him and we're gonna take off the rest of this tail. Uh, so that's pretty much the plan for today. How do you think that's gonna go, Joe? Uh, we're gonna get it off. We're gonna and get it off? It's gonna be a big surprise. Okay, cool. He's gonna be missing a whole tail when he comes back. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. <laughs> and maybe we should just hide it then. <laughs> yeah. Just hide the tail, so then he's really missing it. Right, right, and the video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we know nothing. <laughs> we didn't video any of it. Yeah, cool, cool. All right, so uh, yeah, let's get to work. All right, let's do it. Thank you. 
you guys were here on Friday getting stuff done. What did you, uh, you guys get done on Friday on this? Actually, I got most of the bolts out in the bottom. Uh, the two big bolts that hold the top out, some extra pulleys, some more cables, some more brackets. So we're down to, it's like three bolts, getting a bolt, bunch of bolts out. And this cable here has got to come out. Because it goes through this piece and comes back through it. So it has to go out and then back in all the way through. Uh, grab a light. Climbing it down. Um, you really can't feel the fan even though it's blowing really hard, but it could be worse. It's, I mean, it's not 100 degrees today. All right, so you're down to one big bolt up front? Yeah, there's one big bolt up front here that's still in. All right, let's take the cable out. And this ca All right, well, the cable meets back under the floor out here. So what's happening now? We're going to stop and remove this cable before we take the bolts out, last two bolts. Last two bolts and then this thing's coming off. Or supposed to come off. Should come off. Nice. I thought we'd have more trouble with the bolts. They're not, they're rusty on the head, but the shank's not. So that kind of helped us. Right now, we got to take this cable, which is inside the cabin, all the way out the tail, and then bring it back in because it's going through that back piece, that back stringer for that vertical. So it's all one piece. It's from S Tech for their autopilot. And we got about 40 feet of it to get out of here. <laughs> on. I think it's stuck between the pulleys. There you go. Try it now. There you go. Hold on. Keep going. I'm down to one bolt, but I need a three-quarter inch socket. <laughs> Somebody help. Anyway. Okay, does it move? 
No, it's still actually pretty tight. Really tight? Yeah. Well, That's common. There it is. Okay. I'm coming out. It uh, came off a lot better than I thought it would, actually. He will be quite surprised. He doesn't have to go back in the tail for now. <laughs> Later he will. It's actually surprisingly light. Like, a little guy like me can actually pick this thing up by myself. I'm not carrying it very far, but I can pick it up. <laughs> it's kind of scary a little bit thinking <laughs> yeah. about how light all these airplane parts are. Yeah. Well, we had quite a few bolts on this, at least. I mean, it's more than the elevators and everything were held on by, but it is just laminated aluminum. And we do have some corrosion to clean up. Is any of that like a, an alarming amount of corrosion? Nah, it's surface. It'll come off. We'll clean it up and then we'll get it treated. Nothing real bad. You gonna hold this thing or what? I am holding it a little bit. <laughs> See. We get the end on it, it might come out of there. Yes, sir. Ta da! What do you think, Keith? Uh, it's dirty. It's gross. I didn't see that part yet. That's pretty gross. Cable was rubbing. Oh, yeah. Grab some more. Nah, I think it'll be all right. It's, like I said, it doesn't weigh much. Perfect. It's off. Off on the floor. <sighs> Needs a vacuum. <laughs> well, that was easy enough. Yeah. Should we be over there with a the family? Yeah. <laughs> Hey Harrison, what's going on brother? Yo dude, yo, so I got a little surprise for you. So I know you're still at Oshkosh and um, I figured, you know, you were kind of stressing out a little bit about getting the tail done, all that kind of stuff. So I actually- Oh man, I was thinking about it the whole time I've been down here. <laughs> yeah, I bet you were. So I, I decided to call up Joe and Keith and we, we took off the whole rest of the tail. <laughs> oh man, no way, hey guys, what's going on? I don't know if they can hear you that well. <laughs> we can hear you. I think, yeah. uh, I think the airplane might have lost a couple pounds there. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, and there was a we we pulled it up. There's still some bird nest, um, and we actually noticed there was even like a little bit of cable rub right there, and so it was good we took it all off. But uh, yeah, dude, it looks pretty good. I mean, yeah, really the only thing. How heavy was that thing? Probably what? How much do you think that thing weighed? Seventy-five pounds, maybe. Thank you guys yeah. for getting to that. I was like, I was stressed about that the whole time here. Just thinking about getting back and finishing that up. Not a problem. So we cool. had a little hey, bit of free time. We came up and ripped it off. That is awesome. Well, I heard you had trouble getting in and out of the tail, so I figured I'd better come up again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried getting in there. I was in there a little bit, and, and to be honest with you, I think I would have got stuck if I wanted any further down in there. <laughs> right. But, but we got everything out. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Guys. Cool, dude. It means a lot to me. Yeah, enjoy the rest Thanks. of your trip, dude. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys when I get back. Cool. See ya. Right. See ya. Yeah, bye. Cool. So I appreciate you guys coming and helping us take off this massive thing for uh, for Jason. That, that was really awesome. Yeah, well, a little surprise from Oscosh. I know he's out there sweating a little bit. It's a little cooler here today. I did do this some of this last week when it was 100 degrees. But much cooler today, 25 minutes, off she came. Yeah, cool, awesome. Cool, well, I guess we'll see you guys soon. Yeah, we'll take more apart. Sounds good. I think the wings are next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet they are. Yeah. 
All right, so we still have all of this dirt and bird droppings and all that good stuff up here. And I figured just to sweeten the surprise a little bit for Jason, I'm gonna shop vac it up. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so that wraps up the day. We got the tail off down here. We were able to clean it up real nice, get a little bit cleaner. And uh, yeah, so if you guys could do us a favor, just like the video, click subscribe and turn on those notifications. Um, and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks.